Several of our adventures have been to see how different things are made. And we have had several adventures learning about cotton. So when Ram Manufacturing invited us out to see how they make equipment and parts for the cotton industry and others, we didn't hesitate. We saw several machines. Wait until you see what they can do. But first, let us tell you a little bit about our host and the products they make. Ram Manufacturing was started by Todd Ramsey in 2001, but his experience in helping cotton gins and other ag industries find solutions began well before that. He had developed a strong network of customers across the nation and decided to turn his passion into his own manufacturing company. He set out to make products that either had improved designs and features over existing equipment, or could be manufactured more efficiently, or both. Today, they manufacture a wide number of products for processing, drying, and conveying cotton. They are also the world's largest manufacturer of cotton gin brushes, cotton harvesting brushes, and channel saws. They also do custom sheet metal work, including spiral pipe and dust abatement systems. And they aren't just limited to cotton. Their experience and capabilities often make them suited to projects and other agriculture applications in non-ag industries. This 85,000 square foot facility is the third home for Ram Manufacturing. Having outgrown their previous locations, Todd set out to make this one big enough to last a long time. But in the three years they've been here, they've already had two expansions with another one already planned. Our first stop was the brush making area. Brushes are used in cotton harvesting and several cotton gin machines. Watching them get made is mesmerizing. Some of the brushes are made with a wood base. Machines drill holes, insert the bristles, and staple them in place. The bristles are then trimmed so they are the exact length specified by the application. The bristles can be made from several materials including nylon, tampico, horsehair, and synthetic horsehair. Some materials are more durable, and some offer other advantages, such as less static. What it's going to do here in a minute, is it's got a real wire that see this little staple right here. It's going to make its own staple, and it's going to get a piece of bristle, make a staple, put it around to it, and, and staple it in the bottom of the hole. It's kind of a teardrop style staple because the staple will cross in the bottom and then this stove up here will, it will grab out and flatten out and grab the sides of the hole. These are the spools of wire that get turned into the staples. Some of the brushes are made with a metal base where the bristles are inserted into a metal channel and crimped. And sometimes a rubber strip is used instead of bristles, creating a part called a bat. It's sort of like a big squeegee. Ram provides brushes and bats for other gin equipment manufacturers as well as for John Deere and their cotton harvesters, and they keep a stock of common brushes. They also make brushes for other applications, including street sweepers and other special operations. Next, we saw a CNC milling machine. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control, which means you can program it to work automatically. Milling machines are used to shape solid metal stock into parts by shaving off metal with a rotary tool. This one was milling a keyway on a shaft. We thought it was impressive. Then we saw a bigger milling machine that they have just installed and are about to put into service. To give you an idea of what it does, this footage is from a demo video by the manufacturer. It can handle lengths of almost 200 inches in diameters of 29 and a half inches. A lot of parts are made from sheets of metal rather than blocks of metal. That's where this next awesome machine comes in. This machine is called a turret punch press. It can move a large sheet of metal quickly and precisely positioning it exactly where it needs to have a hole or shape punched into it. The holes can be simple round holes 
or a huge variety of other shapes, including forming, which means stretching and bending the material, such as a lip around the hole, or adding a louver. Each shape or form requires its own tool called a die. There are two dies for each shape, a top and a bottom. The turrets on this machine hold over 50 pairs of tooling dies. The turrets spin to the right tool station while the sheet metal is being slid into position. The shape is then punched into the metal. Each time that happens, it's called a hit. This machine can make up to 500 hits per minute. If it's an overlapping an existing hole, it can nibble at 745 hits per minute and it can make marking hits at 1,800 hits per minute. It's fast! The pieces that get punched out are conveyed into a bin that will later go to metal recycling. This is what comes out, this is what's left over. Steel. Like little star cut Its operation is programmed and it's equipped with an auto loader so that at night it can load fresh sheets of metal, punch everything out, and repeat that over and over all on its own. They call that lights out operation. Even after everyone has gone home, parts production continues to take place. Turret punches are versatile and efficient and sometimes the best machine to use. But another option for cutting shapes into sheet metal is a laser. Ram Manufacturing has one of those too. Right now it's going through its setup process, checking that the sheet metal is square and making adjustments if it's not. It also purges the lines and puts on a new nozzle when needed. Once it's ready, look at the speed it moves. Oh my goodness. Laser beam, yeah. She's not through it. It's okay to look at those cracks. They don't hurt. Look how fast, buddy. I swear, I see the force. It does not require special tooling and can cut both complex and simple shapes. When the part comes out, it's cool enough to be handled and the edges are clean and smooth. That's not even. Look how fast it cuts the outside. Is that because it's shaped the beam into a square? No, it's actually cut one line. It, it doesn't have to pierce, it just blows the line. Do I have it ever? Just you can stuff. grab it. You just cut that and it's not even hot, it's cold. Go ahead, bro. That is amazing. Why why haven't why it's not haven't even hot. why hasn't the speed of sound been broken by this yet? <laughs> it feels pretty good. Yeah. It's so it fast, yeah. Their laser is equipped with an auto loader too so it can also work lights out. Having these and other sophisticated machines allows RAM to do some advanced manufacturing techniques for faster and more precise production. For instance, one of their products are these large industrial fans. Inside is something called a blast wheel, and it spins pretty fast. Having a blast wheel that stays in balance requires that the weight be evenly distributed around the center point. By cutting the pieces for the blast wheel with assembly tabs and slots, the pieces slide into the desired position, making weld-ups faster and the final assembly dimensions more accurate. They use this tab and slot assembly method on many of their products and custom sheet metal work. These capabilities have also allowed them to innovate creative solutions. One of the products they make are cyclones, which capture dust from exhaust air. Cyclones can be very large and take up lots of space when shipping. They also have to be built specifically for an inlet orientation. RAM has began offering cyclones in pieces, allowing them to be assembled on site. This saves shipping space, allows a universal package to be used for either left-hand or right-hand orientations, 
and allows for replacing worn out sections without replacing the whole cyclone. We even got a peek at their engineering and design department where they use 3D modeling software to make sure all the parts match up, check assembly, model rotation, and even simulate airflow performance on fans. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You can um, get to a point where you put pulleys and everything on it, and you know something big like our VCD, you could make yep. it go. Yep, make it run. That's cool. Awesome. You can do explosive runnings of it. Everything's in there. Yeah, we yeah, show your holes up. Yeah. We've only scratched the surface of the products they offer, but it was amazing to see how it's all built. I was so inspired. When I got back to the hotel, I started designing my own brush machine. Special thanks to Todd Ramsey and Taylor Jameson for showing us around. And thank you for watching our videos. If you like seeing our real world learning adventures, hit the like and subscribe button. See you on our next adventure.